Hey everybody, Steve Moore here, owner of Run More, this fabulous brick and mortar running shop located in Westminster, Maryland. Today, we'll be talking about the all new Hocus Stinson 7. We wanted to talk about the Hoka Stinson 7 because it's very different than what I thought this shoe would be. This was my first time running in any iteration of the, Hins of the Hoka Stinson and I sort of had a way in my head that I thought the shoe would feel and perform, but this was actually quite different. So I wanted to take some time and go over some of the key features on why this shoe is the way it is and some of the things that I thought it would be that it turns out I was way wrong on. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty details of the Stinson 7. First, this shoe costs 170 bucks it's got a really high stack height, with the highest point being 42 millimeters, dropping down to 37 millimeters. It's pretty heavy. On the men's side, it's 12.9 ounces, and on the women's side, it's 10.8 ounces. Hoka considers this shoe the Swiss army knife of shoes, and I kind of, you know, they always read these little monikers and titles they give it, and I always think they're kind of funny, but really for this shoe, it actually kind of makes sense. So, this shoe is a high max cushion shoe. It's made for on-road and off-road. One of the unique features on this shoe is that it has the same stability platform as the Hoka Gaviota. The new Hoka Gaviota has what's called an H-frame of stability. So this shoe has this big ring around the outside of it, plus a line through the midfoot here. It's designed to give you different tones of support depending on which way you may have some pronation control issues. So it's a high stability, high cushion trail shoe. So it's a little bit different than almost anything else that we see in this sort of category. You're either a stability road shoe, you're either a high cushion road shoe, you're a high cushion trail shoe, but you're not really a high cushion, high stability trail shoe. So this this felt very unique and just sort of the genetic makeup of what this shoe was. Obviously, a 42 millimeter max point stack height is a tremendous amount, especially when we're comparing it to what the shoe is sort of coming off of. It has the stability of the Hoka Gaviota, but obviously it has that trail outsole feel to it. But even more than the Gaviota 5, this shoe has much more stack height. When I first pulled this out of the box, I was like, my God, that's a big beefy shoe. And I really was sort of expecting it to be a slog, really uninspired sort of run. And in fact, I went and picked a run that I was gonna do that was just sort of a long time on feet. So I got out there, I put 25 miles on this shoe over the weekend, and I was just expecting just a slog kind of run, you know, what you'd expect in a big beefy shoe. But it performed way better than that. I, I was running with a friend that I made made sort of the comparison to like, if you remember in the beginning of Terminator 2, kind of we'll go back to that time, when they're showing the T-1000s in the very beginning, big war scene that was supposed to be in the future, but now is somehow behind where we are now. They're driving their T-1000s over all that field of human skulls. It's that really interesting scene. That's sort of how I felt in this. We went over some really rocky, some really gravelly, and just sort of some tough terrain. This shoe just plowed over it. I never felt the ground. I never felt anything. And I mean, you kind of expect that at this much of a max cushion shoe, but I wasn't used, to, like I wasn't prepared for it. Like I really, I was watching my friend in front of me who was, you know, doing what you'd expect going over really crappy sections. And I just felt like I was just floating along, never, never a care in my mind about what I was stepping on. One of the other big concerns when you have a shoe with this much stack height is feeling like you're gonna fall over, especially when we were sort of bombing down some hills. I thought I was gonna be way more off balance than I really was in the shoe. The shoe performed great, and I'm not sure if it was just the fact that it was so cushiony or the drop was right for me, or maybe the stability chassis this thing is on, but I felt super secure and protected running through this shoe. I also just sort of assumed that this shoe would be slow. You know, I felt like I would be sinking in this shoe and plodding along, but I wasn't. I actually found myself nice and fluid and fun and fast. Even though the shoe is heavy, I felt great running long miles in it. I was really pleasantly surprised with every little bit of this shoe. I was even worried the fact that this doesn't have a Vibram outsole. You know, this is more of just a traditional four millimeter lug outsole protected shoe that has a little more off-road characteristics than an on-road shoe but I really felt like this shoe still had a lot of get up and go to it considering how much it weighs and how beefy this shoe is. Calling this the Swiss Army Knife of Shoes is actually pretty apropos because originally I expected this shoe to just sort of be a trail shoe, but even when we crossed over on some roads, it was comfortable enough that I was like, you know what? 
If I was going somewhere and I needed a shoe to be like a all day touring shoe, running shoe, walking shoe, you could totally get away with this. And the fact that it has that sticky rubber outsole, it gives you that protection if you're going somewhere wet, crappy, cobblestone, someplace that you need a little extra grip, but you don't want a full Vibram outsole where you kind of hear that squeak, squeak, squeak every time you go. It's just enough sticky that you feel protected. It's just enough that you know that it's there without feeling like this is a true, trail shoe out on the road. You know, sometimes when I see somebody in a shoe like this on the road, I picture like goofy dad walking down with his walking stick and like, you know, zinc on his nose, like just a real dopey looking old man guy walking in a shoe like this on the road. But actually think that you could totally get away with this is just like your everyday long walk shoe. Even though it has that sort of trail outsole to it, it's perfect for a little bit of everything in it. One of the things I didn't love about this shoe though, and I know it's there for strategery. Strategery. Is that it has a very high wall to it, designed to kind of keep more muckety muck from getting inside your shoe. And I really, I like that concept of making sure that your foot and ankle are protected so you don't have stuff coming in. But the one thing that I noticed with it is it was rubbing me on both sides of my foot. A little bit of irritation on both sides of my foot from this tall, high, this tall wall here. So just kind of be prepared if you're somebody with sort of sensitive ankles, if you're somebody who finds like parts of the shoe irritating, this could be something to think about. The nice positive side of that is if you did for whatever reason need to add like an insert or something, this shoe's depth is ample and you should be able to fit any orthotic custom or non inside this shoe without a problem. However, this being on the same sort of stability platform as a Gaviota 5, I don't know if you'd need to add anything to this, even if you're someone who's severely flat-footed or somebody who severely supinates, I don't think you'd need to do anything to this shoe to get all the stability and enhancements that you would like. So. I hope that helps answer some of the questions on the new Hoka Stinson 7. So whether you're a trail runner, a hiker, or somebody who just wants to do a little bit of everything and still feel like you've got plenty of cushion, plenty of support, and you can go over any terrain and not worry about getting your foot all jammed up, this would be a great option for you. If you're interested in purchasing the Hoka Stinson 7, feel free to click the link down below. We'll have a little link. Enter promo code RUNMORE, just one word, R-U-N-M-O-O-R-E, and we'll save it. You'll save 10% on this guy and we'll ship it out for free. If you have any questions on this model, feel free to leave it down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. And if you found this video fun, exciting, and informative, please give us a like and subscribe. We would certainly appreciate it. It's a fun, free way for you to help support our shop. If you're in Westminster, Maryland, stop by, say hello, check out the Stinson 7 or any other fun shoes we have on our wall and come join us for a run sometime. So happy running, happy training and all that good stuff and hope to see you around Westminster.